Hello, my name is Dr. Rohit Maida with the Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute and Carolina's Healthcare System in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome on behalf of the, the uh, Cardiac Rhythm Management Clinical Community, Dr. Mitchell Cohen of uh, Arizona Cardiovascular Consultants and the Chief of Cardiology at Phoenix Children's Hospital. Dr. Cohen, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Um, today we're gonna be discussing um, uh, your leadership on the expert consensus document for the young patient with asymptomatic WPW. You know, in reviewing a lot of the information, it, it was very impressive the, the, um, the process and the extensive collaboration that this document really produced. I don't know if you have a, a chance to give us an idea of, of kind of the timeline and what you guys have done. Yeah, so this, uh, the Pediatric EP Society about two years ago decided that there were no real set guidelines for children with WPW, children who are asymptomatic. Uh, everybody sort of tended to do their own thing as far as managing them. And so the Pediatric EP Society approached the Heart Rhythm Society to see about doing a, a joint uh, endeavor to come up with some sort of consensus statement guidelines. And it's, it's been a two-year process. Um, we started with uh, about May of 2010. We identified about 11 pediatric electrophysiologists from the United States, from Canada, from Europe, from Australia. And then uh, HRS also appointed two adult uh, electrophysiologists to be uh, on the consensus statement. So it, it's been about two years from start to finish. Now, from the standpoint of um, the general cardiologist, either adult or pediatric, what are the, the major points that this document is going to help us with? All right, so I, I think for the patient who has WPW, who has that abnormal EKG pattern, who is symptomatic, I think most of us have a, a very good approach to taking care of those patients. So if they've had syncope or if they have SVT, we sort of manage them accordingly, either with medications or with an ablation. But uh, the patient who has absolutely no symptoms, who has no chest pain, who has no dizziness, fainting, palpitations, uh, the decision is how do you sort of manage those patients? We know that the incidence of WPW is about one to three in a thousand individuals. So in a given high school, a couple of kids probably have WPW. And um, we know that probably 50 to 65 percent of kids who have WPW are completely asymptomatic. So in the general scheme of things, it's, it's not a very small number. Um, what is a small number is the risk of sudden death. So the incidence of sudden death in somebody with asymptomatic ventricular preexcitation or asymptomatic WPW, it, it's small, but it's not zero. So the question becomes for the general family practitioner, or the general pediatrician, the general cardiologist, you, you get an EKJ. You get an EKG because a, a kid has a heart murmur, or you get an EKG as part of a, a sports clearance, or they're gonna start an ADHD medication. For whatever reason, you get an EKG and it has WPW on it, has some ventricular preexcitation pattern, and you query that patient, and, and they're completely asymptomatic. The, the key is not to ignore that, um, because the, unfortunately the first symptom, albeit very rare, can be sudden cardiac death. And so the guidelines in the consensus statement were really put out to sort of say, okay, I have this 12-year-old. He's completely asymptomatic, but he has WPW. How do I go about it from here? Can I just wait till they have symptoms? And the answer is no, because that first symptom, unfortunately, may be sudden cardiac death. And so the, the consensus statement really centered around doing a, a very formal literature review, looking at the natural history of WPW, looking at the non-invasive risk stratification, the invasive risk stratification, the risk of an ablation, and coming up with a, a set of guidelines to say, this is how you should approach these patients. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you say it's fair to say that within the consensus um, document, that some assessment of the refractory period or the, the, um, the rapidity of the pathway is essential in that management, either non-invasively by a treadmill test or invasively by an electrophysiology study. Right, absolutely. So the, the guidelines are really written for kids eight and above. So your kids sort of early elementary school years and up, um, if they have WPW and they have no symptoms, it's really incumbent upon the physician to assess the refractory period somehow of that 
pathway, you have to sort of know what are the antegrade characteristics of that bypass tract, because the, the sudden death relates to generally rapid atrial fibrillation degenerating to ventricular fibrillation. So it can be done sort of very easily with non-invasive testing. So if a Holter monitor or a stress test shows that the WPW pattern abruptly and clearly goes away, then the antegrade properties of that accessory pathway are, are probably very slow and have an exceedingly low risk of having sudden cardiac events. And I think those patients can just be made aware that they have this. And if they have symptoms, they should be brought to the attention of a, a pediatric cardiologist. I think if, on the other hand, your non-invasive testing uh, shows that the WPW pattern persists at physiologic heart rate, so you exercise them, they get their heart rates up to 190, and the WPW pattern never goes away, or the Holter monitor doesn't have intermittent pre-excitation, then you have to take it a step further. And, and, tip, and that step further usually involves an electrophysiologist um, to sort of assess the uh, EP properties of the, of the pathway. Uh, and that can be done uh, in the cath lab with either a transesophageal pacing or uh, a catheter a procedure to pace the heart and put the patient into atrial fibrillation if you can, see how fast it goes or pace them. And then there's sort of strict criteria if, depending on how fast it is. But it kind of gets back to sort of kind of assess the patient if they don't have symptoms, you start simple, start with sort of non-invasive testing uh, and then move forward. But the, the real key, I think, to the to the community doctor uh, out there who's, who's going to stumble upon this, and most of the time it is really stumbling upon uh, this, is just because you don't have symptoms doesn't mean you don't do anything. Now, you know, one of the things that we've always find, found challenging in our practice is the patient where you see, you don't see that abrupt loss of pre-excitation, but you see kind of a gradual loss. So if you can expound on that in, in terms of what we should be doing. Yeah, so I think that, um, especially for kids and, and young adults, because the, the document goes up to 21 years of age, so you're going to see, you know, those young college kids with WPW. Um, their AV nodes are really good. So they, they, it's not an AV node of a 90-year-old. And so kids, as they exercise, and, and young adults and adolescents, their AV nodes are, are, are super conductible, if you will. And so as you exercise, the conduction ex kind of gets better as it goes through the AV node. And you may slur the conduction from the bypass tract. So there may be sort of preferential conduction down the AV node, or at least what's visible on the, the treadmill, but it doesn't mean that the conduction is stopped through the bypass tract. So if you kind of see that slowing disappearance of the delta wave, um, it really means that you're probably just having preferential conduction through the node, uh, not an abrupt loss in the conduction down the bypass tract. And really those individuals need to be referred for an EP study that that's not good enough to say there's loss of conduction at a certain heart rate. So it really has to be one beat I see the delta wave, the next beat I don't see the delta wave. It can't be this sort of slow teasing out, as you said. What do you anticipate is going to be the major change in terms of the general cardiology and pediatric cardiology population in terms of how these, this consensus document will affect clinical care? Yeah, so that's, that's a, obviously the, the, the million dollar question of how you sort of take this and, and what it means out to the to the community doctors. I think, you know, there is probably this undercurrent of if somebody had no symptoms and they got an EKG with WPW, well, if, you know, they were probably told you have this. And if you develop symptoms, go see your cardiologist. This is, you know, if you develop syncope or palpitations. Uh, I think this really uh, has, it's been endorsed by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American College of Cardiology, the American Heart Association, the Canadian Heart Rhythm Society. And, and the intention really was to get this global message out there. That was the uh, intention of both PACES, uh, the PZP Society, and Heart Rhythm Society uh, to really sort of say, I'm a referring family physician out in the community. I'm a general pediatrician. I have this EKG. Maybe I do need to send this patient to a, a pediatric cardiologist or an adult cardiologist if they're older and 
have them work this patient up to, to assess the, the pathway. I think that's the, and I think that was the real big push to get co-endorsement from the societies so that, you know, pediatricians and family practitioners will, will look at that and say, okay, this is what I need to do. And they're, they're pretty clear cut step-by-step -step guidelines. Well, obviously, on you know, on behalf of cardiologists everywhere, we want to thank you for your leadership in this uh, in this endeavor, and on behalf of the the, um, the cardiac rhythm management clinical community, I want to thank you very much for giving us your time today to talk to our to our uh, viewers about this important topic. Good, thanks. I, I think it's it's a wonderful marriage between the PZP Society and Heart Rhythm mm -hmm. Society, and so I, I thank the Heart Rhythm Society just as much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.